Hello everybody, Ragtag Saguki here, welcome to the next episode. In the last episode, we found a mysterious girl, and I was off to go get some water and some ether. We've been by ourselves, so, but we're not too far away from the ether crystals, so we can see them just down, down below us. Let's quickly take out this bug, and then go get those ether crystals, as well as some fresh water. And I am so high level and have such high agility that the enemies can barely hurt me. There's our crystals. Now before you grab the item, I recommend grabbing the deposit. Because once you're done here, you're going to be warped away from this area, so make sure you grab the deposit beforehand. You found some water ether crystals. These should be able to help save the girl now. Huh? Uh huh? Who are you? Hello there. Uh, uh hello. How unusual. It is quite rare to see a Homs in this region. I... <laughs> I suppose you're wondering why I am here in that case. Then permit me to introduce myself. My name is Alvis. Alvis? Um, my name's... It's Shulk. Isn't it? Uh, how did you know that? Wielder of the Monado, defender of Colony 9, the hero that has every mech on running. You're famous amongst all Homs. I know you from somewhere. They're here. Huh? The Monado emits a particular ether wavelength in its ground state. It must have drawn them. Huh? Oh! What are they? Alvis! Get out of the way! I'll deal with this myself. From the left? Then I'll go. Huh? Before it struck, how can it? <coughs> it is a telethia. Telethia. They can read your mind, whether you have a vision or not. If they know your next move, it's all in vain. You, you know about my visions. How could you possibly? There is only one way: stop it in its tracks. Then dull its perception. No, Alvin, stop! You don't know how to... Huh? A new symbol? Amazing. I suggest you stop staring. The sword is yours to wield. What was that light? The Monado does not control itself. You control it. I control it. 
by the light of the Monada. I will stop them. All right. So for this battle, Arvis is going to be helping us, and also we've got a new Monado art. We learn Monado Purge. Fighting a Telephia using Purge. Using Purge removes a monster's aura and temporarily prevents them from activating another aura. A Telephia's aura soul read is particularly strong. Use Purge to eliminate it before attacking. Remember to replenish the talent gauge by auto attacking so you can activate the Monado. So if they have annoying auras or certain other things about them, you can get rid of that with Purge. An interesting fact if you look at Arvis, he's using this uh, junk sword very similar to what Shulk used at the start of the game. Also, the necklace he's wearing is interesting, as originally in the original Seed of Blade Chronicles, it was a key, but in this game, it was changed to be what that thing is. If you've played other Xenoblade games, you know exactly what that is supposed to be. Now, all the Telephia automatically have Purge equip, uh, affecting them, so... Do they? Because I... I think that's what that green light is supposed to be over them, is them being affected by the Purge. And also, a good thing about Purge is that it actually does do damage. So not only does it debuff an enemy, but it also hurts them. Hit you with purge. Well, you see now, Shulk. Hmm. Thank you. Hey. Wait a second. More importantly, where on Bionis did you learn to use the Monado? <laughs> they were not the primary Telethia. Merely at spawn. The primary Telethia dwells elsewhere in Magna Forest. Is it... wounded? I see. The Telethia is hurt and lies in rest. Wounded by a girl. A girl? The Monado is a divine sword capable of disturbing the very fabric of existence. Of both the material and the immaterial. Alvis, how do you know so much about the Monado? Who are you? Huh? That's Ryan. I'm over here! Shulk, we looked all over for you. Thought you'd been eaten by the forest. Sorry, Ryan. I got attacked by Telethia. If it hadn't been for Alvis, I wouldn't have survived. Alvis? Who's that? I'll introduce you. He's the one that... Alvis? But he was... Uh, there's no one here. I'm telling you, he was right here. He even taught me how to unlock a new power from the Monado. Just you and me, Shulk. Ain't no one else around. You probably passed out from dehydration and dreamt this guy up. Come on. Wait till the others hear this. <laughs> he was here, Ryan. I didn't dream it. I'm not lying. Okay, okay. I believe you. And while you were having fun with your imaginary friend, did you find any ether crystals? Yes. 
Good quality ones, too. Perfect. Come on. We should hurry them back to Sharla. Hang around here long enough and we'll get whacked by an imaginary beast. <laughs> I'm not lying. Alves, who are you? An enemy that renders your visions useless. This forest holds many surprises. Not least creatures we've never seen before. And now we know there is another who can use the Monado. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to meet him. So you weren't just having a sneaky nap then? No. I'm just saying. You and Dunban are the only ones I know that can wield the Monado. How would this guy know how? Okay, locked and loaded. Everyone, stand back. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, she's coming round. All thanks to our medic. Are you okay? Where am I? Everything's fine. You're gonna be... <gasps> Get your hands off me! Ah! Hey, watch it! F forgive me. I... I did not mean to... Uh, sorry if we surprised you. Are you the ones who helped me? Well, something like that. Excuse me. My name is Melia. Forgive my indiscretion. I have not had the pleasure of coming into contact with the male Homs. Coming into contact? Hey, Shulk. You're creeping this lady out. Mm. Shut up, Ryan. This large one is far worse. Me! <laughs> <laughs> Melia, is it? How did you get here then? What, is there no one with you? I must apologize, but my situation does not concern you. And I shall not be divulging anything to common passers by. Duly noted, Your Ladyship. But if I were to be so bold. I'm guessing that you didn't come here alone, and you weren't just taking an afternoon nap. <laughs> and what, may I ask, are you doing here? It is rare to see Homs venture this deep into Machna Forest. We're traveling to the head of the Bionis. We've got a long journey ahead of us. The head of the Bionis? We were just figuring out how to get there when we found you. I see. Then permit me to return the favor by aiding you in your quest. Really? There is only one path to the head of the Bionis. It is the path that leads to Erith Sea. So, this Erith Sea is at the head of the Bionis? If you would be kind enough to escort me out of the forest, I will show you the way. You... you do that? Thank you, Melia. I'm Shulk. Pleased to meet you. Shulk? Ah, yes. Likewise. <sighs> she's a bit high and mighty. But she's a Homs too, right? Why is she here alone? Ain't got a clue. Ask her yourself. I'm not good with her posh accent. We shall travel to the Nopon village. Nopon village? That's where we've been heading. We reckon it's our best chance of making it to the top. Since inhabiting the region, the Nopon have been a great help. You can travel to Erith Sea from their village. It's settled. We'll make our way to the Nopon village. Very well. The Nopon inhabit a giant tree. If we follow this trail, we will be safe. Okay, so Melia uh, has joined us.
Let's bring her into the party. So this is Melia. So I don't think any of the equipment we have right now is better than what she has. First off, her head equipment. You are not allowed to change it. She is going to be wearing this crest uh, cap for a long time. The reason you cannot change it, change it is for story reasons. Until you progress to a certain point in the story, you cannot change her headgear. Let me see. I don't think anything I have is better. Um, surprisingly, the jungle top actually gives her better physical defense. Otherwise, I don't have anything else that's better. What about the shoes? Yeah, so we just gave her a new top and that's it. Ooh, should I actually look at my skill trees. Because it's been a bit. Okay, you've learned this. Boost, e for, boost physical and E for defense. So you're working on that. So Melia's trees is sincerity, honesty, and reliability. Uh, so let me see. What do I want her to go down right now? I might keep her on sincerity right now. Dunban. Let me see. You've learnt... Reckless Abandon and Twin Swords. See, so you've learned Always Ready. And you've also learned Reckless Courage. Now, Arts. I imagine I have a fair bit of art points. So let's invest. I want to level up my arts, thank you. Let's invest a little bit in Purge. So I believe this mainly, yeah, increases the damage and also how long the effect stays up. There you go. Yeah, up. Battle Soul, Stream Edge, Best a little bit in Backslash, Let's see so for Melia, Melia, these are all of her arts. Melee is interesting. She can summon, uh, she has these moves called like summon bolt, summon flare. She can basically summon an aura, uh, that benefits her as long as it's up. I'll explain a little bit more because it's best to explain in the tutorial. Because she's an interesting character, but a very complicated character to use. Especially to use efficiently. Uh, Dunban. What's up? Worldly Slash. Tempest Kick. An air an air wave deals damage, removing enemy buffs after Gale Slash. I might give that to Dunban. Peerlessness. An aura of high spirits cures the party of confused and increased strength. Fix your gaze firmly on a single enemy, creating an aura of focus. I might keep this on Dunban. Aura that removes debuffs and grants haste. So 
serene heart, a peaceful and focused aura that increases accuracy and evasion. I actually might want to give him that, actually. I think maybe keep, um, what is it, Battle Eye for double attacks and serene heart. Binding Blossom. Go to settings. Put that on done, man. Right, how's your arts looking, Sharla? See, heat bullet. Reduces special, a uh, really special ether bullet that increases the tension. Extends the duration of an aura. That could be useful. Pistol whipping the enemy to inflict daze. I might give her that. Yeah, I think I'll change some of my arts around off screen. And then Ryan. It's up, bone upper, and hammer beat. Ooh, last stand. That's not a bad one. All right, that's good for for a little bit. Beware of monsters with spike abilities. From Mactafar's onwards, you will encounter a monster with spike abilities. These monsters can automatically deal damage and inflict debuffs on the party members in certain circumstances. Spike damage cannot be lessened by increasing physical defense or, or ether defense. So yeah, spike damage is just a flat damage to your character. Doesn't matter how high your defenses are, you are always going to take that damage. So if a spike damage does 400 damage, as you can see right there on that little... Um, in that picture, you will always be dealt 400 damage. It doesn't matter how high your defense is. The different types of spikes. Ikes. There are three types of spikes. A counter spike. The monster deals damage or inflicts debuffs when attacked. A down spike. The monster deals damage or inflicts debuffs when attacked after suffering a, tough, uh, a topple. So toppling all every enemy will not always be advantageous towards you. There are some enemies that will take advantage of that. You'll still do like the increased damage to the enemy if it's toppled, but yeah, just be wary that you're gonna get spiked. Uh, also, you do not know if an enemy has topple spikes until it is toppled. So keep that in mind. You could fight an enemy that has no spikes whatsoever, and then as soon as it's toppled, it will deploy the spikes. There's, I don't think there's any way of knowing if it has topple spikes ahead of time. And then there are close spikes. The monster deals damage or inflicts debuffs if the party member gets too close. So this automatically does damage to you regardless what you do. Combating spike abilities. There are two ways to deal with spikes. Ikes. Ikes. The first way is with Monado Purge. Shulk's Monado Purge can get rid of spikes while the purge is active on the enemy. So this is another reason why you want to upgrade purge so it lasts longer. So that way you don't have to deal with the, with the topple spikes. This makes Shulk a very valuable ally to bring in the into battle when dealing with enemy with spikes. You can also reduce the spike damage with spike defense gems. What's interesting about spike defense gems, if you can equip enough spike defense gems onto a character, character you can potentially give them 100% spike defense, which means they will take zero damage from spikes. At this point in the game, you're not going to have the high quality spike gems to have add enough slots to do that, but it is something to consider. 
Also bear in mind that counter spike abilities can be neutralized by inflicting topple. So yeah, uh, counter, uh, regular spikes like counter and I think even, um, yeah, counter spikes can be countered if you topple an enemy. However, yeah, just be wary of topple spikes and I believe the proximity spike still gets you even if they're toppled. We discovered the Nopon Arch. Also, if we double back here. We find a contaminated land. So it's worth a bit of experience. So I want to briefly go into the tutorial. So that way I can better explain Melia. Because she's somewhat complicated. At Elemental Discharge. My talent art is Elemental Discharge. If I summon an Elemental, I can use arts without worrying about the talent gauge. Remember that each Elemental Discharge fill refills the talent gauge. My ta when my talent gauge reaches its maximum, I automatically enter a burst state and my concentration increases. Elemental Discharge does more damage during a burst, which is, much, which is most helpful. My arts are quite special, it's practically tricky to use my summoning arts, such as Summon Bolt and Summon Flare. Let me see if I got this straight. While the elemental is summoned, it grants, it grants buffs, then dis dismissing it deals damage, right? Indeed, so it's best if I support everyone else by granting buffs, and then fire off an elemental at the end. Right, if you just launch an all-out attack, Ryan will probably find it hard to draw the monsters. Or is aggro? Or is his job? Okay, so that is the thing about Melia you need to be wary of. Her elementals are amazing. They grant buffs to, I believe, not only her but all other characters that are within range. And um, yeah, they are just really great. But the thing is, if you have her dismiss them to do a lot of damage, they draw a lot of aggro. So it's best to have somebody draw aggro like Ryan or um, Dumban before you start um, discharging your elementals. So just to show that Purge can get rid of spikes. I hit this thing with, uh, with Monado Purge and now it no longer has spikes. Also, I believe Purge counts as E for damage. So it's one of the few ways Shulk can do E for damage. Now, Melee is great when it comes to Efer damage, because I believe nearly all of our arts are Efer base. So it's not good if you don't want to attract enemies like this to you, but really great if you need to deal with enemies that are primarily weak to Efer base damage. Let's give her some shoes. So yeah, Melia is actually pretty good, but the thing is, she's a very complicated character to play because many people, try, uh, when they first get her, if they decide to control her, they try to play her like most of the other characters, like Shulk, Oak, or Ryan or whatever, just go all out attack and then they just outright get destroyed as Melia. Where Melia is not uh, made for that kind of playstyle, she's more so hanging out in the back. Because um, while she has her elementals out, they do range damage, so she can attack from uh, from range. She can't attack too far away. I don't know. I don't think her range is as great as say Shala's on how far back she can be in the group. But um, she can um, primarily um, attack from range, and I believe it does count as an auto attack. Uh, giving her staffs mainly uh, give her damage to auto attack if she needs to attack up close. And I believe they can also affect her elementals somewhat. Alright, so let's get the Ether Crystals here. And fall off trying to get that OW item. And I think with that, we will end the episode off here. Uh, actually... Yeah, let's give this thing a fight. Don't hold back. Let's have one last fight before we end the episode. Got, 
Come on, let's get the purge so we can get rid of the spikes. Inflict the days. Okay. So yeah, with that, we'll end the episode here. So in the next episode, we will start making our way to the Nopon Village. So if you enjoyed this episode, do you like the videos? It helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts of this episode. And share the video so that way more people can discover my content and help the channel grow. I'll see you all next time. Later.